Good morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening, depending upon where you are in the world. And welcome to the webinar about Wastop, um, holding back the flood and protecting against uh, flooding in many parts of the world. This webinar is going to be about uh, installations, Wastop installed in various different parts of the world, just taking a look at different applications and different types of installations. It's not going to be a technical product session about Wastop. We have other web webinars for that. Please join our website to to have a look, um, but this is just focusing on inst installations around the world. So having said that, first off, what is a while stop? A while stop is a non-return inline check valve that is used to stop backflow in stormwater and sewer applications. I'll show you an animation about how the while stop functions. There we go. So a wire stop is slid inside an existing pipe and then bolted onto the wall, whether it be into a chamber or into um, an outfall structure. Once it's bolted in place, the valve works instantly, allowing flow to go through the valve by building up a pressure before releasing that flow. And then when the flow drops down to a closing pressure point, the valve will close and it's completely closed against backflow, whether it's from odour or from um, stormwater or sewer or whatever you have trying to come back in the other direction. Standard valves take up to five meters of back pressure. We can do up to eight meters of back pressure if required. The valve still opens underwater. If you have a submerged application, the mem membrane will pop open and allow that flow through so long as you have a higher upstream pressure than downstream pressure. That pulsating flow helps keep your pipes cleaner both upstream and downstream over the 20 year life expectancy of the valve. We do different configurations, both with uh, the installation type you saw uh, in the animation, but also with the flange application. We can do, uh, sorry, installation. The flanges we can do in many different uh, shapes and sizes and configurations, just depending upon, upon what you need. And a valve can also be installed in reverse. So if you're going into a chamber, it can either go on the inlet side or the outlet side of the chamber. So that was a quick run through of how the valve actually works. So how about we have a look about at where it is installed. Whilst I've been installed all over the world, um, the dots on this map represent some of them are a few of the actual installations, but a lot of them are dots representing partners that we work with in the many different countries that we um, sell whilst of. So in Australia and New Zealand, for example, we sell through high grade water. Um, are the dots there, uh, whereas some of the dots that you see over in the US and Europe, it's where we're um, active ourselves. We've got over 55,000 installations around the world, so that would be an awful lot of dots on the map if we were to put them all on there. But let's start the journey by going to USA. Um, I thought we would start on the east coast of the USA because on the east coast there is a lot of problems with flooding, partly due to the low uh, level, of, what do you call it, low elevation of the land in Florida, for example, um, and partly due to storm surges that they do get in regularly here and also due to the king tide events that come in and inundate the stormwater system. So to zoom in a little bit more on this particular area, I think we'll head into Miami Beach. Now in Miami Beach, they have what they call sunny day flooding. And sunny day flooding is when they're getting water on the streets when there is no rainfall event. So as you can see the pictures on the left here, they're showing flooding, but it hasn't rained here for quite some time. That flooding is simply salt water, sea water that has come up through the stormwater systems and inundated those stormwater systems and then flown back, flow back up onto the roads. Um, and to combat this during king tide events, what they were doing previous to the wild stop installations was they were installing these, as you can see in the picture on the right, hopefully um, you can see these little black uh, blow up plugs. So they would literally go out and install these black blow up plugs um, into the outfall of the uh, chamber and that would stop the water coming in. However, they would then have to go and remove these blow up plugs again to be able to allow the stormwater to go out during a rainfall event. So it was a very time, um, a, a bit of a time waster basically and very resource um, demanding. So what they did there was install 220 odd uh, wire stop valves in various different applications. And because they couldn't get access to the actual seawall, they were getting um, the wire stops to go down inside the chambers and install on either the inlet or the outlet of the chamber, depending upon uh, what was required there. 
um, made a very, very simple installation and completely stopped the sunny day flooding in those areas. We did another interesting application in Miami Beach as well, where they had a slightly different problem. The problem there was that um, the groundwater system would push down onto the, sorry, I'll just come back to this, push down onto, so the tidal um, king tides would push down onto the groundwater table and that would push it back out through the stormwater system because what they had there is a groundwater recharge system. So when the stormwater is collected into the system, it should go down these vertical wells into the, to the groundwater system to recharge it. However, during a king tide event, this is what their, what their chambers look like. So that's water coming back up from the groundwater system into the stormwater system and filling up their stormwater system so that that would then you know, come back up onto the roads and cause flooding. So that was an easy installation for us to do, um, but it was a vertical one. So instead of putting the wire stop in the normal horizontal um, manner, you would drop it down into the vertical well and with the flange on it there, you just bolt it back into the existing um, well that they had and with a trash rack and a cover over the top of it to stop any trash going down into the groundwater system. It's a very simple installation and it was done um, very, very quickly and the alternative to this would be pumping station to be able to pump the, the water out of there when it is coming up, which is obviously expensive, not just to, uh, to do, but also in ongoing maintenance and so on. So just up the road from um, Miami, there's a place called St. Augustine. Now, St. Augustine is the oldest continually lived-in city in the U.S. It was founded by the Spanish in 1565 and have been largely unscathed by flooding throughout their history, and they have an amazing amount of cultural buildings or heritage buildings in the city. So it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. However, that with rising tides and storm surges, they've been finding that water is finding its way up onto the streets and inundating these amazing buildings, causing um, damage to the infrastructure. So um, during the last major event in 2016, there was a hurricane called Matthew that came through and just caused an awful lot of damage in that area. Uh, Jessica Beach, the city engineer, was tasked with coming up with a way to stop this flooding or as much of it as she possibly could anyway, the flooding coming up through the storm of the system. So Jessica went through and she identified a whole bunch of points that needed to be um, rectified in order to stop that water coming up on the streets. As you can see in the picture on the left here, this is an installation, uh, sorry, a, a place that we did an installation, but the picture on the left is prior to the installation. And the picture on the right is post installation um, during the same type of king tide event. So the valve in the middle there, as most wall stops are um, installed into inf existing infrastructure, they're designed to be slightly smaller on the OD of our pipe than what a standard concrete or ductile iron or plastic pipe is so that they slide into place and are just bolted on. So an amazing result just by installing a number of valves throughout the city to protect, to protect these um, buildings. Another one of the applications we did in St. Augustine was this one. This is me climbing out on the on the uh, railing here to be able to try and get a measurement of the pipe so that we had a rough, something rough to go off. It was quite a muddy area and difficult to get to. But when we actually got the measurement and got the valve, uh, this is what the installation looked like. I was glad that I wasn't standing waist deep in water like this guy is. But he literally slid the valve into the, um, into the pipe, which was a difficult installation because the wall is actually slanting on two angles here. It's slanting it's sort of vertically like that, but also horizontally. Um, so it would have been a difficult installation to have a flange or anything on it. So this particular installation pushed the wire stop all the way back in, used non-shrinking grout around the uh, wire stop and bolted back up into the um, existing concrete. So simple, fairly easy to put in, um, and that's a big pipe, so it's, it's a 60-inch pipe, so it's stopping a lot of water going back in the, in the opposite direction. Uh, from St. Augustine, we'll head over to Fort Lauderdale, and I love this one, this, this guy, he's so excited about putting the wire stop in, you can see the big smile on his face. Um, these ones were just small valves going into PVC pipe. So once again, just being able to sl slide into that PVC pipe, and then they actually tapped it back onto the pipe to hold it into place there. The advantage of doing installations like this is it's fairly easy if you do need to 
take the valve out for any reason, um, just unbolt it and pull it out. But with a 20-year life expectancy and very low maintenance on the valves, you don't need to pull them in and out. Um, in Fort Lauderdale, we did a large number of, of installations and we're still doing a large number of installations there, re replacing uh, flap valves and um, failed duck bills as well. So where they've gone into existing infrastructure, found that there's a flap valve or a duck bill installed, simply removing that and then being able to put the wall stop inside the pipe makes for a, a very easy installation. So Lynn Burnett in uh, Anna Maria Island, she looked at what had happened in Fort Lauderdale and she also looked at what had happened in St. Augustine and Miami Beach. And when she was tasked with doing a project for Anna Maria Island to stop the flooding there, she had understood the way things had worked in those different places and how that would help her tackling the flooding in Anna Maria. Now, the wild stop valves were just a part of her plan here. She also did a whole lot of upgrades to the actual system um, and upgrades to the way the water was being able to be um, permeated down through the soil and the hard surface areas into the stormwater system. So a lot of uh, nice shelly um, areas and walkways and so on to be able to let that water down. But Lynn did a large number of installations throughout Anna Maria Island uh, protecting these homes from flooding. And you can see one of the installations here, um, a lot of headwalls, so the valves just slid into these headwalls and the stormwater outfalls. And it not only protected backflow from going up onto the island, but it also meant that without that backflow up onto the island, you're not pulling those um, heavy metals and pollutants from the roads and so on back into the sea again. It's just a lovely fishing area around there. So that was a really good installation or set of installations by uh, Lynn Burnett there. So to depart now from these warmer places and head somewhere a little colder, we're going to whip up to Canada and have a look at some applications in Ontario. This first one here is one that I am working on right at the moment, the city of Kingston. Um, as you can see, they have a gate valve in there, which is kind of rusted and not functioning anymore. So it is not stopping backflow, as you can see by the fish in the chamber. Not particularly beautiful. Um, the St. Clair River, I believe it is, um, is on the, the outside of, of this, and this is allowing the stormwater to come out through this chamber and out into the St. Clair River, but obviously wanting the St. Clair River not to come back up into the system. Um, so very shortly, there'll be a well stop valve in this installation, in this particular application to stop these fish getting into the chamber. I don't think it would smell particularly good in there. So going to Hamilton in Ontario, Canada, um, this application, I was there and took that photo on the left there. It was freezing cold with ice all over the, the rocks there, as you can see. But um, Ontario is obviously not on the sea, but they do get um, a lot of storms and the pretty big lakes. And they also do get um, higher lake levels seasonally in the spring and in the autumn. So this particular application, there was problems with rocks coming into the system from the lake. Um, but also, you know, once you get these rocks into the system, the rainwater is therefore not able to get out through the through the pipe and through the valve. Um, sorry, prior to the valve being in there, get out and um, go into the sea, into the lake. Sorry, um, but with the wall stop in there, it stops the rocks going into the system, and therefore they have the retention in the whole system for the storm water for the rain to be able to collect. Um, and then build up that pulsating flow and push out through the valve. Without the valve in here, they were going out and maintaining this at least once, once a month, digging out the, set, the stones out of this chamber, as you can see in the centre picture there. Um, they had a payback term of just one year after installing this valve because of not needing to go out and maintain it and also not needing to go out and pump when that rainwater couldn't get out of the system. So a very good installation um, and just shows the versatility of the wall stop. I mentioned earlier about changing out some flap valves. This is one that we did in the city of Brentford, Ontario. And the flap valve on the left-hand side there that you can see, it, you know, flap valve's been around since, I think, 25 AD. So they're a great invention. Um, really, really good for protecting against backflow in areas where it's not going to cause a whole lot of damage, material damage or damage to people or their property. Um, in this particular flap valve, it was getting twigs and, and branches and things stuck in it, so it wasn't able to close properly. And when it couldn't close properly and the river level rose up, it would push that water back up and start um, inundating homes. And the homes are actually quite low behind that area there. 
So that's not good. Um, so very easy to pull out the wall stop, uh, sorry, pull out the flap valve and push the wall stop in. And then um, with the low head loss of the wall stop, it allows a large amount of water to come through. So when they do get a good rainfall event, that water can just flush through. This film here, just it's not at full flow right here. It's at a fairly good flow, but it's not not at full full flow. But it's showing that that membrane just sort of adapts to whatever what is coming through it. So to move on from Ontario, we're going to head somewhere slightly warmer again. We're going to head over to the South Pacific. We'll start off in New Zealand. Um, in this application, let's talk about being knee deep in mud. This application is to protect water from coming back up during high tide events, pretty much any really high tide event and king tide events coming up and flooding the motorway that's uh, just quite close to this area here. Um, and flooding on the motorway is a bit of a problem in New Zealand. We don't have a whole lot of motorways and the roading around uh, Auckland does get very congested. So this was an essential installation. It had to happen pretty quickly because it's a tidal area. As you can see, the picture on the left is at low tide. And obviously, they're pumping out what's left in there to be able to get the valve in. And the picture on the right is at high tide. So they definitely didn't want to be in there installing at high tide. Now, this installation is slightly different because it is actually three valves um, installed in one head wall. You can see the head wall on the left here. It is got a, a hole that is slightly odd shaped and that is to be able to accommodate the um, one meter valve that is in the bottom of it and then the, the two smaller 200 millimeter valves. Now the smaller valves are to allow out the, the rainfall events even if the tide is up and the opening pressure of the larger valve hasn't been hit yet but it's also in there because as you can see in this picture here it's an extremely muddy uh, area and they're just wanting to make sure they get as much flow out of there as possible to be able to keep all that mud and silt um, flowing and with the smaller valves on the top there even if it's a high tide event and it is rainfall they'll still shoot the water out so that that motorway doesn't get flooded which is pretty essential as I said there so um, I'm damaged by my work but I do think that picture on the left is kind of pretty so from there let's head over to somewhere even uh, more beautiful and warmer Fiji um, beautiful place here, amazing resort, but the problems they were having was three of their resort rooms were getting um, problems from flooding during king tide events or high tide events. And these king and high tide events, they were pushing the water up so that it was coming over the edge in towards these three, um, they've got like resort rooms there, and these three rooms were getting inundated. And this was really not good when there were people there and it's not good when there's not people there because the damage to the place is quite expensive obviously um so they wanted to put in three valves to stop this flooding in those particular places and after the installation there was um i think it was the same day there was a 2.4 meter tidal event which is a pretty high tide for there at the same time it rained so of course the resort owner was a little concerned about what was going to happen but with, with only 100 millimeters of differential needed for the opening pressure of these valves they were able to the valves were able to open even though it was a high tide event and allow that water to come through and then they came back to us afterwards they were very excited because one of their other concerns was that they were going to get coconuts stuck in the wall stop and we've never had that question before about coconuts being stuck in the wall stop before but they said no no everything was fine we went around and we checked for the coconuts afterwards and there was no coconut stuck stuck in the valves so Open up free one stop. From here, let's head on over to Brisbane, Australia. Really nice city, absolutely beautiful, amazing work they've done on the South Bank there to make it a, a really nice area to spend your time in. However, it is a tidal river and it, it starts also very a long way inland. So if there's a very, very heavy rainfall event and storm events and so on, it can cause major water amounts of water to come down through this river. Um, and both in 2011 and 2014, they did suffer from major flooding. Um, one of the events, they actually had to let a dam go upstream because it was at its critical level. And of course, when that water hit Brisbane, it happened to be at the same tide, time as a high tide event, Murphy's Law. Um, the beautiful city was then inundated by water. There was major, major flooding all over the place there. It was a complete, complete disaster. After that event, Brisbane City Council went through and did an investigation to work out where they needed to put uh, valves to try and protect the most um, vulnerable parts of the city. 
And they did a test with a whole bunch of different valves to see what was going to work best. And in the end, they went with mainly Wastop on their um, critical infrastructure here. And they went, one of the biggest valves that we've put in here was uh, two 1.8 meter side-by-side -side valves here. And this is going into a box culvert um, and allowing that flow just to, to come through when there's a major uh, rainfall event and obviously stop that tidal river um, inundating the residents behind, but also being able to stop if, if there's even higher river events. I've got big stop um, banks here. But on this installation, we actually also put in four smaller valves. And the reason why we did this was because um, the city council were a little concerned that there was going to be mud build up around the front of these valves um, because it doesn't rain in Australia that often. They were worried that that mud was going to build up and make it difficult for the wild stop to open. We tried to assure them that that wasn't going to happen because of the um, pulsating flow, but we went ahead and put in these smaller valves down the bottom here, which actually let out the groundwater as well that accumulates behind them because they have a lower opening pressure. Um, and this keeps the mud moving and it also stops you know, standing water upstream and stopping mosquitoes and so on. So that constantly pulsating and keeping this mud that you can see on the side here, keeping that away from the front of the valve. So functions very well. Um, been back and looked at these valves several times and they're just, just doing their job, which is great. So from Brisbane, we can head um, over and have a look at an installation that's actually not by the sea, but it is also somewhere that gets flooded. As you can see on the picture on the left here, this is a stormwater um, channel where they collect the stormwater and it flows from there out towards the sea. But um, the problem was here that that stormwater channel, if they do get a large rainfall event, and this is a commercial area with a lot of hard surface, hard surface area, so that would all run off the hard surface area and into this channel. And if that channel come up, came up too high, that water would flow back through um, this head wall structure you can see on the picture on the left here and start inundating a, a car park and a area of uh, where there's a building warehouse with goods and stuff on the, on the ground, which was not good. So simple installation, this went into new infrastructure, um, two head walls put in here, one on each side, and then the valves in between, dirt over the top and grass over it, and job done. Made it very, very easy. Um, ooh, sorry, sticky fingers. So from here, we'll head on over to Europe. And we've obviously got a lot of installations in Europe, but I'll show you just a few from a few different countries, starting in Karlstad in Sweden. Now, Two years ago, we had an absolutely amazing summer in Sweden, and it was really, really warm and sunny and very unlike Sweden. However, that caused the water levels to drop um, in a lot of the lakes and the rivers and, and all around. So the problem here was that there's a, a sewage pumping station that has an overflow that would normally be on the picture on the left here. The overflow pumping station, um, the sorry, pumping station overflow would normally be underwater. So any odours were contained and not able to come out into the atmosphere. But with the low water levels, obviously the pipes sticking out into open air were causing problems with odours coming out and um, local residents were getting really annoyed with this. So they went and put plastic bags over the end of the pipes to try and stop the odour. Not good, didn't work. But simply putting two wire stops, one on each of these pipes, there was two pipes side by side here, putting one into each instantly stopped the odour. Um, coming out of these pipes, but also if they do get you know high water levels, it's going to stop the the backflow into the pump station as well. It's a very beautiful area and very um, effective installation of wall stop stopping that odor. In the Czech Republic, we've done installations in a small small town with only three thousand six hundred people. It's two hundred eighty kilometers east of Prague. Um, big river runs through the city or well, town. And they have these tributaries or these uh, the stormwater canal system that links up into the river. When there is a flood in the river and the river level rises, these canals get inundated as well. And that will flow back up, as you can see on the picture on the left here, through their stormwater outfalls and flood their systems. Um, this wall stop is installed right inside the pipe here. So there's ways of installing wall stop where you just slide it inside the pipe and then using the little tabs you bolt back out through into the in in existing infrastructure. So the valve is completely hidden from view. And as you can see, the area is, is really nice, beautiful area. So that's lovely installation. We've done weird and wonderful installations such as this one in Malmö in Sweden. This was just recently that 
we got, you know, this, the drawing of the, the chamber on the left there and they said, well, we need to install a check valve in there. I said, well, there's not a lot of room, but a little bit of handiwork of chopping out some concrete and actually creating a smaller wall stop by shortening the length of it and adjusting the flange on it. We were able to put it down into place so the actual final installation looks like this. It's a very nice, neat, tidy installation. And as I mentioned before, the wall stop's able to be installed in reverse. So as in this particular application, just slid in there in reverse and bolt it on. So from here, we're going to head over to the Middle East and Asia. And we'll start off with an odor prevention application in Qatar. In Qatar, they don't have a whole lot of rain. Uh, so the stormwater applications are fairly limited there. However, they do have a lot of problems with H2S in their sewer system. Um, and with too much H2S in the sewer system, the odour was able to get back up through um, their sewer chambers and sewer system and into this particular hotel, the Torch Hotel. Um, and you can imagine checking into a hotel and the first thing you do is you go into your room and oh, it smells like rotten eggs. Not particularly pleasant. So just a few installations of wall stop and critical points here stop that odour uh, odor problem. And that's actually an application we've done a lot of in the Middle East in particular um, with high, high levels of H2S. We have different membranes depending upon what the application is. And for these high levels of H2S, we have a special membrane that is very resistant to the corrosiveness of, of that gas. So we've also done an odor prevention application in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is a sewer dumping station where they're dumping the sewer from these trucks in through the... Um, uh, so through the pipes and then down into the wastewater treatment plant through these holes that you can see on the picture on the left. On the right, this is post-installation. We have a T-structure um, allowing the, the pumping to go down through the T-structure that has a wall stop in it, allowing that flow to go down, but stopping the odours from coming back up. Extremely simple, extremely effective installation. So to look at something a little bit different, we have done some installations in um, a shrimp farm in Madagascar. In Madagascar, there is, uh, it's, it's quite common to have these shrimp farms, um, as you can see on the picture on the right there. From the shrimp farms, they have a release of the water going out into the sea. And on the picture on the right, you can see the, the edge of the coast just right on the left-hand side of the picture. Um, the problem with the shrimp farms and these overflows that are going out into the sea is that they've got they had issues with crabs going back up the system and eating their shrimp, which was not good. And then the picture on the left, you can see one of the original flap valve structures that they had in place there. And obviously with the flap valves, they you know open and close and they might get stuck a little bit open, allowing those crabs to go back up. Um, so with the well stop in there, it only opens to let that flow through. And when the flow is going through, there is a higher velocity of water than coming out of a, a flap valve because of that pulsating flow. And that therefore deters the crabs and stops them going back up the the system there. So the shrimp farm can safely produce 5,000 tonnes of shrimp a year um, and do a very good job of it. They don't get eaten by crabs. So from Madagascar, we'll head to Malaysia where we've done a project, we've been part of a project called the River of Life Project. The River of Life Project was launched in 2012 to beautify the whole area around the river, clean up the river, make it more livable, um, build office buildings and residence and so on. And their aim is to have 27,000 new employment opportunities in the area and have 35,000 residents. Um, but to do that, obviously, they had to make sure that there wasn't going to be any flooding. So you can see here two, two of the 45 valves that we put in here. Uh, the big one is a 1.8 meter valve and the little one is a one meter valve going in. And they really boasted with this installation because they said the installation took just seven minutes. What they meant was seven minutes from the back of the truck to actually having the valve in place. It wasn't bolted in by that time, but still pretty quick. It's, you know, as long as you've got the measurement of your pipe right, if you just slide down and bolt on. Very, very simple. Uh, we did a project in Cambodia as well, where we've installed 60 wall stop valves uh, for the airport runoff. So uh, when it's a rainfall event and the rain is rainwater is needing to be led off the runway, it comes down and goes eventually through these wall stop valves that you can see on the right hand side here. Um, PVC valves that they've just put into their PVC runoff pipes. Um, but it's going into these ditches and these storage areas. And if they get over full these storage areas, they don't want that water to come back and start backing up on the 
runway again, of course, because it's one of the busiest airports in Cambodia. So they definitely don't want to have that closed. They've done a lot of renovations in that particular airport in 2006 and again in 2017, which is when they put in these valves here. So one final application is a very odd one in Sweden. Um, it's a place called Solbaria, and it's actually a prison. Um, the area was previously famous for King Gustav, who used to stop there when he was going to visit the silver mines back in the 1500s. Uh, after the silver mines stopped being active, the area was then turned into a military um, training area. And part of these buildings were built for that. After that, they turned into a mental hospital. And then following that, they turned this whole area into a prison. Um, and it is a class one prison, which is the highest security prison that we have here in Sweden. And um, in 2007, they converted it with now having 264 prisoners and 300 staff working there. Now we got a call from the, the um, prison asking if we'd done acoustic testing on the valves, which was not a question we've had before. So they asked if they could buy one to be able to do some testing, and they did that. Um, following the testing, they bought a whole bunch of valves of us. So we actually had to ask them, so tell us about the application. Um, are you trying you know, to stop sewer or stormwater? No, 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 they said. Um, the problem that we've got is that prisoners are talking to each other, which confused us even more. But then they went on to explain that the prisoners were actually siphoning the water out of the toilets to be able to communicate through the um, sewer lines. Very, very odd or inventive or something. But the water stop installed in the sewer lines just broke those sound waves enough to be able to stop the prisoners talking to each other. Kind of bizarre. So that's what I've got for you today. Um, that's the installations of One Stop around the world. Just a bit of a, a touch on each one. If you have any questions or any thoughts, um, just get in touch with me via email or on the chat, which is live on our website, um, or contact your local One Stop supplier who you can find on our website as well. And as I said, we've got plenty more webinars coming up, so just drop in to join us anytime you like. Thank you very much. Have a good day and keep safe.